Hello everyone, Logan from Curated Avalon here, and today I will be sharing with you my currently inked pens. Now this is my Girologio pen case. It holds three pens and it has a magnetic closure. I've been using this pen case for a few months now and I have to admit I've dropped it pretty dramatically on several occasions and it hasn't popped open. The pens inside have been fine, so I continue to use this one and like it a lot. Inside the pen case today, I have my Pilot Vanishing Point in stripes. I have my Sailor Pro Gear in Stellar Black Hole. And a Lamy All Star in white silver. Now, I have three different inks in each of these three pens, uh, and I carry typically carry specific inks in each all the time. The Sailor Black Hole pen, that's the only one that I swap out inks pretty regularly. Uh, my Pilot Vanishing Point, I keep standard with the Noodler's Dark Matter ink. I have the picture of Oppenheimer on the front. I love this ink, it's my favorite black. So I actually refill this pen about three to five times a day right now. Um, which is a lot, I've, a lot of writing. I've been sitting and writing a lot for about a month now. So this pen gets refilled a lot. I don't keep it super clean. <laughs> I, when you're writing that much, you just don't have time to polish it a ton. Get it to refocus here. It just doesn't want to focus. Come on, there we go. Okay. So this pen I like a lot. Uh, I had hurt my hand recently and was actually unable to use any of my other fountain pens aside from this one because I could just use it with one hand. So that was fantastic. It actually worked out really well for me. I'm just gonna set these aside real quick and do a little writing sample. This is a medium nib, but for some reason, to me, it honestly writes more like a broad nib. I thought that was a little odd since it's a Japanese nib, but whatever it has going on, it writes just a little bit fatter than I was expecting. It didn't matter to me. The writing experience was so lovely. I had to keep it anyway. Alrighty. So yeah, this just has an incredibly smooth writing experience. Feels a little bit like writing on a cloud, especially on Tome Away paper. So that is the Pilot Vanishing Point. It does get dirty. It gets fingerprints on it quite often. It, it does look more like an executive pen. I actually bought this one kind of on accident and wasn't expecting to get it, but I did get this pen. And it was like the best fluke purchase of ever because I absolutely adore it. Um, it doesn't bother me that it gets dirty. I mean, it kind of does, but I use it so, so much that I, I'm never actually really looking at it. So it doesn't bother me too much if this was more of an executive pen uh, where I wasn't using it so much. I still don't think it would bother me because I don't think it would get particularly dirty. But yeah, absolutely love this pen. I got addicted to the clickability. I really did, especially with writing so much and so often. Um, it, you kind of have more of a dip pen experience with being able to just click it like that. It's pretty cool. So that is the vanishing point. Moving on to the Sailor Black Hole pen. I adore the aesthetics of this pen. The style is lovely. I love the flat top. I really do. The vintage vibe really got me on this one. I wouldn't say I'm a vintage pen style person per se. I don't think that's really my style 100%. I do love the look of vintage pens, but I don't think I prefer one over another. I just, this pen was just gorgeous to me as soon as I saw it. I just, my jaw kind of dropped and I was like, oh yes, I need the Captain Kirk pen. It's absolutely stunning. So this is in zoom nib. So we've got a really big fat nib on the end and I have Liberty's Elysium. So this is Noodler's ink. 
uh, but it was an exclusive for Goulet. I've got Liberty's Elysium. And of course, with the zoom nib, it depends on what angle you're holding the pen at as to how wide of a line you get. So you can have quite a lot of fun with it. I love the ability to lay down just a ton of ink. It's kind of funny because I actually use this more on a daily basis than I was expecting from kind of a specialty nib experience. I love using it for lists and just kind of generalized writing for whatever reason. So this is the Sailor Stellar Black Hole. It's one of their pro gears with a zoom nib, quite fun. I don't have really any negatives about this pen. Could I use a slightly larger profile out of a pen? Yes, but I'm somehow this balance is just fine in my hand and I don't have an issue with it, even for being on the smaller side. Um, it's actually really not that much. It's actually a lot bigger than the Vanishing Point. Okay, isn't that interesting? Somehow, this feels like a bigger pen. It must just be the heft. I do prefer metal pens and I love medium nibs. So it's actually longer than the vanishing point if you take out the click angle. Okay, cool. That was just a total mind over matter thing for me. Perfectly normal size pen, feels good. Don't have a problem with it. Moving on to the Lamy White Silver. This is their all-star line. So it is a metal body with a medium nib. And in this pen, I have Diamine's Writer's Blood. And I didn't show off the label, I don't think, for the Liberty's Elysium. I love the historical labels that they chose. The images for this bottle, very, very cool. A lot of history there. All right, back to the Writer's Blood. Uh, that ink I bought a bottle of without even buying the sample. I was looking for the perfect red ink and I tried so many different samples and nothing really tickled my fancy. Nothing was quite right. So I'd read somewhere that Diamine was coming out with a new red ink called Writer's Blood. So I held out a little bit. I kept going, if they just had something between Oxblood and like a Syrah, I think Syrah, is that the color name? Uh, it would be the perfect color ink for me. So I read about the writer's blood, and when I saw this sample online, I just bought a bottle of it. I was like, yeah, this is going to be the perfect red for me. And it is. I love this red. Uh, this is just the one I use standard, and I keep it in the Lamy pen. And this is the medium nib. Um, this is mostly for countering notes I've already made. I'll usually have a blue or um, a red ink pen on me at all times. Just if I need to go back through and go, I uh, need to strike that and then I write in a note to express why I struck it out in red or blue or whatever. Anyway, so this is the Lamy All Star in white silver and a medium nib. This is a very comfortable pen. Uh, <laughs> Lamy's are just workhorses. There's just really no other way to describe them. They're very comfortable. I'm not a super fan of plastic, so this is why I, I keep like a red or a blue ink, although I've been keeping the red ink, ink in there for a really long time now, uh, as standard because I'm using it less. I could use it more. I mean, this could actually be a daily writer for me and be fairly comfortable. I'm just not a particular fan of the plastic grip or even the triangular plastic grip. But if it's if it comes down to beginners, oh my goodness, this is such a fantastic pen to give them. Um, I've known so many people go, oh, I don't like fountain pens, and then I'll hand them this one, and they just sit down and write with it, no problem whatsoever, and they really enjoy it. Um, my 
15 year old cousin. I handed her one. She uses it. She actually uses it for school. She loves them. And <laughs> even my mother, who's just like, I can't write with fountain pens. Like, I'll try this one. And uh, she picked it up and was able to write with it. Easy peasy. So it's just an absolute workhorse. It is very comfortable, so, but it's just very lightweight and I, I do prefer heavier pens. But yeah, so that is what I have currently inked. Thank you so much for watching. Comment below if you use any of these pens or would like to try them. I'm very curious to see what y'all have currently inked. Thank you so much and have a good day.